Hi, I'm Deepak Bhatt for ACC.org. I'm here in Barcelona at the European Society of Cardiology and we're at our second day of late-breaking trials and it has been a fascinating day. Uh, joining me is Professor Gabriel Steg, my good friend and colleague from France, and uh, maybe we can start off with a trial that we actually both uh, worked on, the COMPASS trial. What are your thoughts about that one? Well, of course, I'm slightly biased, uh, but I think it's uh, it's a great trial. It's potentially a game changer. It certainly can impact clinical practice. COMPASS is a large trial, 27,000 patients with stable CAD or PAD, uh, for whom standard therapy would be long-term antipathic therapy with aspirin. Right. And uh, that was the control arm. But patients were randomly assigned to two experimental arms. One was low-dose rivaroxaban, 5 milligrams BID, or a combination of very low dose rivaroxaban and aspirin. The, 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 the dose of rivaroxaban in that arm was 2.5 BID. Yes. And patients were followed up for long-term cardiovascular outcomes. And the trial was prematurely halted by the DMC of the study because it uh, actually crossed the boundary for premature cessation and there was a mortality benefit. And what it shows is a substantial reduction in MACE for the combination arm of low, very low dose rivaroxaban and aspirin compared to aspirin alone, associated with a cardiovascular mortality reduction and an all-cause mortality reduction, all of whom, all of which are statistically significant, albeit you can debate the p-value strategy in the hierarchical analysis. Now there was a price to pay for that efficacy, which is that there was an increase in bleeding by approximately 70%, so that's not trivial. But the increase in bleeding, number one, did not affect intracranial hemorrhage or fatal bleeding yes. was not statistically significant for these uh, more s serious uh, uh, outcomes. And I think the best estimate of what we, call, we would call net clinical benefit is all-cause mortality, which is going right. in the right direction. So if all-cause mortality is positive, I think that's a strong incentive to consider this as a potential strategy of the future. I agree, and you know, it is a second trial with that dose. That is the ATLAS II trial with ACS <laughs> tested patients with that dose. And there as well, in that arm of that study, there was a reduction in all-cause mortality that was statistically significant. So I, I agree with you, really uh, great data. And uh, moving on, the CANTOS trial was an important study that studied inflammation or attacking inflammation with a specific compound in patients at high cardiovascular risk and found a significant reduction in ischemic events, not in all-cause mortality, but in ischemic events. And interestingly, also a reduction in cancer-related mortality, lung cancer mortality in particular. So uh, fascinating, I think, validation of the inflammation or anti-inflammation hypothesis. Yeah, it, it's really, uh, I think, a shocker, this one. First of all, I, very few people expected this to be positive, to be frank. Right. And it's not only positive, but it's really a, a big win. Yes. It's a home run. And the second thing is, from a pathophysiological standpoint, we're opening a whole new avenue for sure. a whole new therapeutic avenue. We've known for years, people have repeated to us, coronary artery disease is an inflammatory disease. But we didn't have strong data about anti-inflammatory interventions. They were granted a, a couple of small trials with colchicine that had pointed out to potential benefit. But right. this really is the first trial, a landmark trial, showing that addressing inflammation can change the course of atherosclerosis and other diseases such as cancer. Absolutely. So this is and a very attractive hypothesis to continue to explore. There'll be more of this. Yeah, conceptually, it's just a huge home run. And, and speaking of other landmark trials, the Redual PCI trial was also presented here, a trial we were both involved with, uh, a trial that uh, Chris Cannon presented here. What were your thoughts about that one? So that's also an interesting practical question that uh, is discussed all of the time with interventionalists. How do you handle a patient who needs PCI and, and requires anticoagulation because of atrial fibrillation? We've had some small trials try to address that question. Uh, Regional PCI is the largest ever trial so far to address this. 2,200 patients randomized to three arms. A conventional arm receiving warfarin-based therapy and dual antipathy therapy with aspirin for one month for BMS patients, three months for DES, and continued P2Y12 inhibition. And two experimental arms that were the Bigatran 110 or the Bigatran 150. Right with P2Y12 inhibition and aspirin being withheld after PCI. So it's dual strategy, anticoagulation plus uh, 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 P2Y12 versus triple therapy, but with aspirin only for one or three months, depending on BR metal stent or DES. The primary outcome was bleeding, and it's very clear that using 
the bigger tr the bigger trend based strategy compared to a warfarin based strategy reduced bleeding substantially. Yeah, large there was a risk massive reduction. reduction in the 110 and even a statistically significant reduction in the 150 arm was right. the bigger trend. What's interesting is that there was no price to pay in terms of ischemic events when you pull the two the bigger trend arm you achieve non-inferiority and in fact the the uh, 150 seems to be do, doing even better there's numerically a slight increase in thrombotic or ischemic events with the 110 but there's a greater reduction in bleeding and so that gives clinicians potentially two options to tailor therapy to the risk of each patient if you have a patient at very high thrombotic risk you want to use a high rate a high dose of dibigatran if you have a patient at high bleeding risk you want to use a low dose of dibigatran and get less bleeding granted potentially at the increase at the risk of a slight increase yeah, in the Yeah, I mean, that's events. a beautiful summary. Really flexibility for clinicians with these two doses of dibigatran. Of course, one isn't approved in the U.S., but, but at least conceptually uh, a lot of flexibility there. And the other part, I think, is it shows that aspirin, clopidogrel, and full-dose anticoagulation, yet another trial showing that that's a losing strategy, really triple antithrombotic therapy causes an excess of bleeding when it's a full dose anticoagulant as part of that. The final study I just wanted to touch upon for our audience is the Validate Sweetheart. It's this um, a trial of ACS patients in the ongoing Swedish registries. They're doing a bunch of trials within registries, really clever, effective way of churning out high quality research. And the particular question here in this ACS population was bivalrutin versus heparin in PCI, that age old question and controversy. And uh, what did you think of the findings? Well, I think this nails it. 6,000 patients, half STEMI, half non STEMI, randomized to heparin or uh, bivalrutin using modern antiplatelet therapy and no mandated GP2B3A, right. uh, which has been a confounding factor in most of the previous trials, including trials in which we've been uh, involved. And I think what they show is essentially no difference. No difference in bleeding, no difference in ischemic events, no difference in stent thrombosis. Right. So really no difference. And that probably makes a strong case for using unfractionated heparin, given that it's much cheaper and easier to use. Sure. With just one other caveat, it was about 90% radial as well. So maybe if you're still doing femoral, some advantages in terms of bleeding for bivalve versus heparin. But certainly in the population they studied, there was no obvious benefit that I could see. Well, terrific. Those were really fantastic trials, very uh, provocative, potentially practice-changing. Thanks so much for your insightful Thank you. comments.